remember uh, it was Peter Rosenblum who gave a presentation. Now it must be, you know, 10, 15 years ago. And uh, he talked about the S curve. And I had no idea what was the S curve. I don't know. I thought he was skiing, you know, talking about skiing. But no, what he was talking about is when you're thinking about your business, it cycles up and down, but it's like a sideways S. When you're on your way up, you can't really see when it's going to start to, and you certainly can't see beyond the top of that slope. So New York is growing. It's, I think we're about, we're about 20 lawyers right now. And uh, we are finding that we're, the, as the work increases, we need, we need more resources. We need, we need some help. So we're, we'll probably in the near future be looking at growing our associate ranks in New York. I don't think Foley will, uh, unlike a lot of firms, that go out and grab firms where a smaller firms and integrate, the, try to integrate them in where every opportunity it gets. I think that Foley will be much more strategic and organic about its growth so that it preserves the health of what it already has first and then brings on new offices as, uh, as time goes on. We're always going to lose uh, law students and sometimes, you know, some laterals as well. We're going to lose them because they want to know that, you know, they've got an opportunity to move. You know, I'm going to come to this firm in Boston for two years, but I may want to be in L.A. or I may want to be in Tokyo. Um, so there's no doubt, but there are enough people who want to be in the cities where we practice um, and they want to make their lives there. Um, I'm still waiting for someone to tell me they need me to move to the Paris office. You know, that, you know, that I will sign up for. You know, I think the firm had a lot of successes um, in its middle ages. Um, it had the first African, one of the first African-American partners, one of the first female partners uh, in, 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 in Boston. So we can be proud of that, but it's really not, I think, something to be proud of to say that we have one or we have two um, African-American lawyers or, or female partners. That's not a goal of a firm. We want our firm to look like um, the populations of the cities where we, where we practice, and we're a long way from that. When the diversity committee was started, I can't think of a single attorney who did not want to be a part of that committee, myself included. If we're talking about being lawyers, we're solving problems for our clients the more different ways of approaching that problem, the more likely you're going to have success. I think it's a big help when you've got people sitting around the table who are coming at it in all different ways. Whether it's gender diversity or any other kind of diversity, the more diverse we are as a firm, the better product we can give to our clients. The committee uh, is about three years old, four years old, and I have been on it since inception. Uh, you know, what we're trying to do is sort of take a 10,000 foot level look at what are the specific circumstances that exist, exist at Foley. I mean, obviously, could we have more minorities? Could we have more uh, uh, diversity in terms of gender uh, orientation? I'm a part of the firm's Committee on Diversity and Inclusion. An awful lot of the work for that, uh, that committee involves um, working with uh, various committees, including the firm's executive committee, uh, trying to promote various uh, uh, areas of training uh, to make um, all of us aware of the ways in which we can, uh, we can contribute to a, a very diverse and inclusive environment. Uh, and it has been extremely rewarding uh, in terms of the feedback that I received while working with the committee. I think everybody recognizes that the firm faces challenges in terms of its hiring of uh, diverse attorneys. It's not a challenge that's unique to this firm, and it's not even a challenge that's unique to law firms, uh, but I think it's a challenge everybody takes very seriously. So there's a good mix of genders, um, particularly at the associate level. Um, as you get more senior, as in every large law firm, uh, there are less women, but that is definitely changing, and uh, we've got a great crop of new female partners this year, and um, I think there's going to be a lot more in the next few years as well. If you looked at the patent, the senior patent litigators around the country today, that there is an old boys club, um, and that we have really managed to, to buck the trend, or at least cultivate a generation of women patent litigators who, um, who will be the next generation of old boys club, and that name's going to have to change. <laughs>
we've had transitions and major clients in this firm, and it's important that the lawyers be flexible enough to move to, I mean, there was, when I first came here, there was no environmental practice to speak of. There was really no labor and employment practice, but as, as time went on, these became very important things, no intellectual property practice and whatever. So as clients come to you with these different legal issues, you've got to be adaptable. We are not a, a, a staid, traditional, institutional player. We're a, um, we're a player that's oftentimes finding ourselves uh, at the edge of, of, uh, of where the new law and the new technologies are. And so, yes, I think that it's going to be our openness to unconventional hires um, and, and to uh, looking outside the box that's going to keep the firm vibrant in the future. So I think that's going to be critical. And I think it's a mix of those kinds of people. It's the mix of the traditional lawyer and the, uh, and the one with the different experience that then brings clients to think that, oh, maybe these people are actually uh, offering something that we're not going to get elsewhere. As I look at the talent that we have at this firm, and across the board and at all levels, we have such talented attorneys. It's going to be fun to watch and see what happens in the next decades and the next 75 years. We always have to stay current, if not ahead of the curve, to make sure that we're developing the skill sets that are going to be needed, not yesterday, but tomorrow. And you don't want to fight the last war in terms of practice development. You've got to be ready for the next one. Why will Foley continue to be a force of nature? Why will we continue to be a leading law firm in the city of Boston? And it's because we will continue to rely on our focus on client service and the relationships we build with our clients because I feel here at Foley it's not about just selling time. Our lawyers are selling themselves and what I mean by that is they're selling their legal expertise, their industry knowledge, trust. It's attributes like this that generate tremendous client relationships. When you think about the number of firms that no longer are, or you think about the number of firms that just have merged, and you know, maybe they are, but they're just, they, they, they've become a different type of firm. I mean, I think at some level we are still, I mean, we've changed, we've evolved for sure, um, but um, I think at some level we are still the same firm that Henry Foley founded 75 years ago. So, uh, none of us have been very attracted by the idea of being told by some um, managing partner you don't really know who, who's in Minneapolis that you should hire somebody f or that you should use somebody from Tucson on your team because that person isn't busy enough. I don't view us as a small firm um, and I think that uh, you know we go up against some of the biggest firms and I think we do it quite well and we're happy to do it um, but um, you know will things change? I don't know. I think that we're not interested, uh, I think, as a firm in, in doing large mergers. We, we do bring people in. We can use our international experience and success in the litigation area to try to promote more corporate work. And through the corporate work, to try to promote more commercial arbitration. Foley is, is a special place because uh, it, it is a mid-sized firm by uh, global standards. Uh, but we handle some of the most high profile cases in the world. Do I want, <laughs> so the question is, do I want to be here for the rest of my career? I suppose so. I mean, people say to me, you've been there for 50 years, what's wrong with you? Couldn't you find some other life for yourself? And the truth of the matter is I found a great life here, you know, both, both personally and also professionally. So until they kick me out, I'm hanging in there. Ha, 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 ha.